Neymar Jr., football superstar for almost one and a half decades, entertainer, fan favorite, and the backbone of Brazil's national team for most of our current generation. Kyrie Irving, basketball star for over a decade, entertainer, used to be a fan favorite, and yeah, he is a little bit of a weirdo. On the surface, it's clear why the two of them were good comparisons. They're each widely considered to be one of the most skilled players in the history of their sport. When you actually look at their careers, though, it's pretty interesting how identical they are all the way from their early years to the current day. Why am I making an entire video about this? Well, because it's fun, and yeah, that's about it. There's nothing more interesting to sports fans than pointless comparisons. We'll start with the obvious. Neymar and Kyrie are two of the nastiest players in the history of sports. Neymar does some things with the ball that no one's ever seen before. If you ask football fans who the best dribbler ever is, some might say Messi, and that's a fair answer. Some might say Ronaldinho, and I'm not mad at that. But based on pure entertainment, uniqueness, and creativeness, give me Neymar any day. His Santos highlights are some of the filthiest things to ever touch the internet. Obviously, I was a little kid when he was on the come up, and unlike the top five leagues, it's a lot harder to find old, full Santos games on the internet. There's more than enough, though, to show you that Neymar was an absolutely wicked, evil little boy. Swear to God, if I was a grown-ass man and a teenager was doing shit like this to me in front of thousands of people, I'm moving directly out the country. This shit humiliating. On the other hand, we have Kyrie Irving. A lot of people on this account probably don't give a damn about basketball, so all I'm going to say is Kyrie is disgusting with the ball in his hands. The term unguardable is used for plenty of players. KD, for example, Giannis, Curry too. KD is largely unguardable because of his absurd length, though, and Giannis is because of his absurd strength. Curry is unguardable because of his insane stamina and off-ball movement, along with the whole being the best shooter of all time thing, of course. Kyrie is unguardable because you literally just can't stay in front of him. He's just too shifty and quick. He absolutely has the deepest bag in basketball history. He's pulled out moves that don't even make sense. Combine that with his absurd finishing at the rim and you have an offensive weapon. Neymar and Kyrie are both widely believed to have replaced an older generation of ball handlers, Ronaldinho and AI, as the best dribblers ever. Some old heads disagree, but those are debates for another day. The point is, these guys are dirty with the rock. Early on, their careers aren't really that similar. I mean, Neymar was carrying Santos to trophies and Kyrie was struggling to drag a doodle Cavs team to 30 wins. Forget about the playoffs. He didn't even get close to his third season. Neymar had a level of hype that I don't think any basketball player has ever matched besides like LeBron, maybe. It all started when they teamed up with arguably the greatest players of all time in their respective sports. Whether LeBron and Messi are better than MJ and Ronaldo is a debate for another day. We're not getting into all that right now. In the summer of 2013, Neymar signed with Barcelona for $57 million. In the summer of 2014, LeBron James made his famous decision to go back to Cleveland. Neymar had teamed up with Messi, and Kyrie had teamed up with Braun. Their first seasons together were both relatively disappointments. Braun and Kyrie made it to the NBA Finals and lost in six games to the Warriors. Kyrie got injured in the first game of the Finals, and Cleveland didn't stand much of a chance after. Neymar and Messi lost the league title and lost in the UCL quarterfinals, both to Atletico Madrid. Their second seasons together were both iconic, though. The Cavs completed one of the greatest comebacks in the history of sports and dropped off the Warriors in the best basketball series I've personally ever seen in my lifetime. Meanwhile, Messi and Neymar were joined by Suarez and the iconic MSN trio was created. They won the treble in the 2014 season and Barcelona became the first club to do it twice. Kyrie was the Robin to LeBron's Batman, Neymar was the Robin to Messi's Batman. Some people would debate that Suarez was already Robin during the trouble season and they'd have a great case, but either way, Neymar was Messi's sidekick. Neymar had 10 UCL goals and scored in the UCL and Copa del Rey final. Kyrie put up 27 points per game in the finals, including the legendary Game 5 where him and LeBron both dropped 41 in the clutch Game 7 shot that secured the series. There are plenty of players that have been good second options on championship teams, though. It's everything that happened afterwards that makes them even more identical. LeBron James and Lionel Messi are two giant figures. In their prime, no matter who they played with, there was only one place you could possibly fit in their shadows. There was no space at the front and center. I don't believe it's ever been 100% confirmed, but it's widely believed that one of the motives for Neymar leaving Barcelona was because he wanted to be out of Messi's shadow. Of course, the ridiculous amount of money PSG shitted out to get him also helped, but being the central player on the team is believed to be one of his main motives. Do we know if this is true? Not for sure. Is it likely? Yes. Neymar already had one of the greatest players ever on the other wing. Add Suarez on top of that, who just won a golden boot a couple seasons before and was very clearly right under Messi and Ronaldo in the eyes of the football world. He wasn't even Robin anymore, he was starting to look more like Alfred. Many people think it was the infamous comeback against PSG that really wrapped everything up. Neymar was instrumental in that comeback, and even though he got credit for his performance, Messi was front page everywhere. He was in the headlines, and of course he had the iconic picture where he was mobbed by fans. The idea that Neymar wanted to get out of 
a messy shadow is logical speculation, especially with the absurd amount of ego in every level of the sport. Besides the money, there's not much else that makes sense. Even Messi and Suarez expressed their confusion about the move numerous times. Either way, Neymar left Barcelona in the summer of 2017 and joined PSG, where he would be the superstar and the team would be built around him. That same summer, Kyrie Irving became restless in Cleveland. Similar to Neymar, some of what we know about the reasoning behind his choice is based on reports, rumors, and speculation. Kyrie also allegedly was tired of being in the shadow of a much larger figure. There was also a rumor that Kyrie heard the Cavs were treating him out on the trade market and he was trying to get ahead of the curve by requesting a trade. Kyrie has come out and said that the reason he asked for a trade was because he spoke to the higher-ups and he didn't like their plan. That could mean all kinds of things though. Whatever the case, Kyrie ended up in Boston. He got his supposed wish of being the main man, and so did Neymar. He got his supporting cast, Hayward, Teenage Tatum, Young Jalen Brown, Smart, Morris, Horford. Neymar had Cavani, Rabio, Di Maria, and the teenage Kylian Mbappe. Solid teams. What could go wrong? Well, a lot. By 2019, Neymar had still failed to lead PSG to a Champions League trophy. He lost in the round of 16 two straight years. Kyrie had failed to lead Boston to an NBA final. He was hurt the entire 2018 playoffs. Then in 2019, he put up an absolutely dookie performance against the Bucks in the conference semifinals, dropping 20 points on 35% from the field and 21% from three in the series. A nasty, nasty narrative was forming about both players. They weren't leaders, couldn't win as the main guy, weren't reliable health-wise. It didn't help that they faced pressure from the most demanded fans in the world, Neymar in France and Kyrie in Boston. Even after all this, though, there's still more similarities that these two share. Their off-the-field bullshit is constantly a distraction. Neymar has been criticized by everybody under the sun for his off-the-field behavior, ducking off to parties and social events, getting sturdy at functions while allegedly being injured. Classic Brazilian football player shit, to be honest. Meanwhile, Kyrie's just... He's just an odd guy, to be honest. Sorry, I'm still stuck on that whole flat earth thing. That was such a funny-ass time to be a basketball fan. Anyways, he sat out half a season because he refused to take a vaccine. He made comments about Jews that got him in trouble with the league and Nike. He randomly disappeared for a bunch of games in a row for personal reasons. I mean, he's definitely a character. The -the off-the-field shit lost both of them a bunch of fans, but it still doesn't stop there. After failing to lead their new teams to anything meaningful, both players formed super teams that were unreal on paper. Back in 2019, Kyrie teamed up with Kevin Durant to form what was supposed to be an offensive machine. They later added James Harden, one of the best scorers in basketball history, in early 2021. Harden, KD, Kyrie, three score machines that are each the best ever in a different category of offense. Later in 2021, Messi, Mbappe, and Neymar teamed up to form an unreal team. Arguably the best player ever, the best young player in the world, and a superstar. Nothing could possibly stand in the way of these two teams, right? Well, nothing but the worst pain in the ass in all the sports. Injuries. Both Neymar and Kyrie's super teams didn't get off the ground, and one of the main reasons was injuries. In almost two seasons together, Harden, KD, and Kyrie only played 16 games together total. In the first playoffs together, Kyrie and Harden were both hounded by injuries, and KD couldn't carry them past the Bucks in the conference semifinals. The following season, Kyrie had his vaccine episode and missed almost the first half of the season before returning as a part-time player. By then, it was too late, though. Harden was done with the bullshit, and he dipped off to Philly. Over at Europe, Neymar hurt himself a few times, but none was more devastating than his injury before PSG's second leg against Bayern earlier last year. PSG stood no chance and they got dropped off, concluding the second straight year where their super team got booted out in the round of 16. To be fair, that PSG team did have other issues, chemistry, some midfield problems, rumors of behind the scenes animosity. At the end of the day though, both Neymar and Kyrie's super teams were finished in two years or less and they all scattered. Harden was traded to Philly. KD was traded to Phoenix, Kyrie was traded to Dallas. Messi went to Miami and Neymar made the shocking decision to go to Saudi Arabia. Just recently, he obliterated his ACL and he's going to miss the Copa America, unfortunately. He's 31 years old, but with his injury record and where his career is now, he's done. As for Kyrie, he's doing all right in Dallas, averaging 22 points a game next to Luka. He's already missed almost half the season with a foot injury, though. He just returned, but it's clear that he's back in the Robin role next to Luka. His days of trying to be the guy are long gone. 
With Neymar especially, it's disappointing as fuck because he was supposed to be one of the best ever. Kyrie cool and all, but his expectations weren't anywhere near Neymar's. I mean, yeah, he was a first overall pick, but Neymar was a once-in-a-generation player. Neymar's downfall was also slightly more injury-centered than Kyrie's. Kyrie's had his health problems, but his biggest absence in the last few seasons was because of the vaccine issue. Since joining PSG, Neymar hasn't played more than 22 league games in a season a single time. That's six years, bro. He failed to make it to 20 games three times, and he's been one of the most unreliable superstars in the world, if not the most unreliable. Overall, though, the two of them have tragically similar career paths. Maybe in some other timeline, they both stayed with their teams. Neymar never left Messi and Suarez. Maybe they won another UCL or two. Kyrie never left LeBron, and maybe they were able to take advantage of the Warriors' injury collapse in 2019 instead of Toronto. It was rumored that LeBron wanted to leave in 2018 regardless, so maybe that's just bullshit wishful thinking, but at the end of the day, we'll never know, and both Neymar and Kyrie will be looked at as letdowns compared to what they could have been.